Hey, what's up guys, it's Roy here. So back in the day, OnePlus was known for their motto, never settle, and it was because they made these great flagship phones that were competing against Samsung and Apple, but charging you half the price of what the big boys were, and it really made them stand out in the crowd, especially for the people like me and you who are probably watching this video, who knew about OnePlus, but the mainstream folks, they didn't know anything about OnePlus. Now fast forward to 2022, over the last few years, they kind of started switching out of their lane and started trying to become more like the phones they were so desperately trying to kill back in the day. Now, the nice thing though about OnePlus is they do have their Nord lineup, which are more affordable phones that give you a lot of great specs, but there are some shortcomings. And in this video, I'm gonna review one of those that just came out from T-Mobile, and that's the N20 5G that I have here in front of you. So this bad boy stood out to me because of two reasons. One, the specs on paper were pretty dang impressive. And two, the price. The price is $282. So let that sink in for a minute. $282 in 2022. What do you really get for a phone that cheap? Well, in this video, I'm going to answer that for you. So let's jump right into it. So when it comes to the OnePlus N20 5G, like I said, the price is $282. Now that's pretty damn impressive considering most phones these days are way above that price. And some of the specs that you get are really impressive, but like I said, there are going to be some shortcomings. But with those shortcomings, I think a lot of people will be able to overcome those and really put this phone on a pedestal, maybe even saying it's the best budget phone that you can buy in 2022. So first things first is talking about the availability. So T-Mobile is exclusively selling this phone. Even if you go to OnePlus's website, they're going to reroute you to T-Mobile's website, which, okay, totally fine. At some point, I have to think OnePlus is gonna have it on their website. And at some point, I gotta imagine it's gonna be on Amazon and on Best Buy's website since they do now sell T-Mobile devices as well. But the point is, it's only at T-Mobile. So if you are a T-Mobile customer, you can get it for free if you add a new line to your account. Uh, or if you're just a new customer to T-Mobile, you can get it for free. But $282 is the normal price. So for $282, you get a lot. So inside the box, one of the main things that's really impressive to me about this phone is that you get a charging brick and cable with it. And it's not only just some generic charging brick, it's a 33 watt fast SuperVoot charging brick that is going to charge your phone from like zero to 100% in under an hour. And that's pretty dang impressive considering my Galaxy S22 and my iPhone 13 Pro didn't come with the charging brick and it doesn't charge as fast as this $300 sub phone. Also in the box, obviously we get just the basic stuff, user manuals, all that as well. And then looking at the phone itself, you get this really big, beautiful 6.4 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display. So that's another feather in the cap of this phone is that you're getting an AMOLED display for a $282 phone. The screen gets plenty bright out in the direct sunlight. I've used it for a week now. I haven't had any complaints with the brightness of the screen. The colors look very correct. They're very vibrant and punchy. The blacks are deep. It's an AMOLED screen, so what do you expect? But the point is, is you expect it to be kind of somewhere skimping on it, but it really is a great screen. Now there is no Gorilla Glass Victus Plus or anything like that as far as the screen protection goes. I actually don't really know what the uh, protective screen is. Um, only thing I could find about this phone is that it has a 2.5D screen, which all that means it's just got this slight curve. It's not completely flat and it's not a waterfall edge display either, but it has this really nice subtle edged kind of curve um, that you hardly notice, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. But the point is it's just nice looking, but I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just grill glass like five or whatever. I have no clue. If you know, let me know down in the comments. But the point is, is it's a good looking screen. Now we do get an in-display fingerprint scanner. It is optical, just like all other OnePlus phones. It's very fast and responsive, and you can change all the animations if you want to in different animation styles. And we also uh, get face unlock with it as well. And we also have a hole punch camera in the top left-hand corner, which I'll talk about more in the camera portion of this video. 
but the only downside to the screen that I can say is that it's only 60 hertz as far as the refresh rate goes. So we're not getting 90 or 120, we're not getting an LTPO display or anything like that, but I kind of expected it to be 60 hertz, but it would have been a pleasant surprise to get 90 because there are other Nord phones from OnePlus that do have 90 hertz refresh rate. So inside the phone that you can't see is we do get a Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 chip, and so that's where we're getting the 5G speeds from. It's a mid-range chip, it's pretty decent. In my week of testing, I haven't had any lagging or major issues with it. One little pro tip that I would say though is to go in the settings under battery and change it to the high performance mode. It does say that it will suck up more battery and also maybe overheat your phone if you're like gaming for long periods of time. But in my week of usage on this phone, I haven't had any overheating issues and I haven't really noticed really it killing my battery either. Now moving to the bottom of the phone, we do get a USB-C charging port, obviously, hence why we have the fast charger in the box, but we have our mic down there. We do have our speaker down there, which is the only speaker in this phone. It is not a stereo setup, it's just that single down firing speaker, which is kind of a bummer. I wish it would have been stereo speakers, but just to show you a little bit about the audio and how if you accidentally cover it up, what it sounds like, here's a little clip that I recorded of me just watching uh, something on YouTube. And also at the bottom, we're greeted with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is pretty nice. Most budget phones tend to have these because I guess the phone companies think that people aren't gonna splurge and buy wireless headphones. I don't know why, since you can buy like a pair for like 19 bucks on Amazon. But the point is, is you do have the headphone jack, which I wish all smartphones had actually, just so I had the um, you know opportunity to plug in wired headphones if I wanted to. Um, but it is what it is, but yeah, so we get a headphone jack. Uh, it does have Bluetooth 5.1 as well, guys, so the stable connection with all of my headphones have been great as far as uh, using wireless headphones, just FYI if you care to know that. And then looking at the sides, we only have our power button on one side and our volume up and down buttons on the other side. Now above the volume up and down buttons is where you're going to find the SIM card tray and there's a hidden gem inside of that SIM card tray, which I'm really excited to talk about. And that is when you pop it out, you're greeted with the ability to expand your storage on this phone. So you're getting six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage on this phone out of the box, but you're able to increase it to 512 gigs by putting in a micro SD card. And that guys right there is a huge win for this phone because I wish most smartphones did this, like how Samsung back in the day used to, but that is a feather in the cap for this phone. So another thing to point out is this phone does not have an IP water resistance rating at all. So there is no IP65 or 68 or anything like that. Even when I take out the SIM card tray, there is no gaskets or anything around it. So it definitely leads me to believe that there is no underlining like, oh, it might be waterproof. I definitely don't think it is, and I think it would do fine if you're out running and it starts to rain. I think it's going to do fine if you have it on your arm. Obviously, in your pocket, I think it'll survive, but if it's in your pocket and you go do a cannonball in the swimming pool during the summer, you're probably going to have to invest in another phone. Also that you can't see inside is a 4,500 milliamp battery. In my testing over the last week, this 4,500 milliamp battery has been just fine as far as giving me the screen on times that I was hoping for. Now, granted, this phone does only have a 60 hertz refresh rate, and it is running Android 11 with Oxygen OS, obviously, for the skin, which I was kind of hoping was Android 12, but it's not really a huge difference between 12 and 11, I guess, from what I've been able to tell. Um, but at the end of the day, with all the optimizations with the battery and everything and the software, it has been giving me some pretty decent screen on time hours, which has been almost eight hours when I'm using it in high performance mode, just FYI. So as it said, it could drain the battery, but it really hasn't killed it that much. So to get almost eight hours of screen on time with this phone, 
It's pretty dang impressive. And it takes about an hour to charge it from zero to 100% as well, which is surprisingly faster than my S22 and my iPhone 13 Pro. So before I get to the cameras, I just wanna kinda of take a moment to talk about the design of this phone. So I really like this design from the camera lenses, how they did them, to the squared off edges on the side, to this really nice blue smoke color that they have. It just looks really good. It feels and looks premium, and no one could ever guess that it's $282 just by looking at it. It looks like a much more expensive phone, but these squared off edges just feel really good in the hand. I just really like the design of this phone, and it's lightweight. It's only 173 grams, so it's a plastic back. So yeah, so you're gonna you know, have a little bit more durability than glass, but obviously you can still break plastic. And there is no wireless charging either, just to point out as well. So that is another downgrade with this phone. So with all that out of the way, let's get to the main thing, which are the cameras. So a lot of people are gonna really care about the cameras, and then a lot of people aren't gonna care about the cameras. In my opinion, people that buy these types of phones probably aren't going to care too much about the camera quality, because they're gonna be that occasional video and picture taker. If you are a picture person or video person, you're probably splurging to buy a flagship device anyways. But on this phone, we do have a triple camera setup. And I say triple camera setup because one of the lenses is a monochrome lens and I would rather have a dual camera setup and not have the monochrome lens, but is what it is. But the main sensor is 64 megapixels. It does just fine. And we have a two megapixel macro lens and then that two megapixel monochrome lens. So as far as my experience with the picture side of things, the pictures seem to be okay. There is this like AI tab that you can push that just gives you like scene optimization as far as like being able to tell if it's a piece of grass or a dog or a person and kind of help boost it to try to make it look better. Uh, and it seems to do an okay job with that. As far as the pictures that I've taken just out and about with my kids and just outside, it does okay. Once you zoom in, that's when like the granular stuff starts to happen. But at the end of the day, for the average eye, no one's gonna be able to really tell and honestly, probably not complain either. Now with the two megapixel macro lens, that's really just more of a lens for fun stuff to take, you know, just goofy pictures, right? Zoom in on your skin, zoom in on a Lego or the carpet or a piece of grass or something like that you're not gonna be taking world-class professional photos with that macro lens. It's just more of a fun lens. And like I said, with the monochrome, I'm not even gonna waste my time on that. Now on the front of the phone, we do get a 16 megapixel camera, which once again is fully capable. It does pretty decent as far as the pictures go. Um, when it comes to portrait mode on this phone, that's where I tend to kind of lean on that side of like, eh, it's not that great because in some conditions it does great with far, as far as the portraits go, but then in other times it has a hard time trying to differentiate between my hair and like the background and it just starts to blur out certain parts of my body and that's just noticeable when you zoom in a lot more too, but the point is that there are better cameras on more expensive phones, but once again, the camera is fully capable. Now when it comes to recording as far as videos go, that's where there is another downgrade in this phone, and that's because the max resolution that you're able to record in is 1080p. That's a bummer, but it is what it is. Heck, five, six years ago, most phones didn't have 4K unless you splurge and bought the, uh, the high-end phones, but the point is, is that in 2022, it would have been nice just to have 4K on the rear camera and just 1080 on the front, but the front and rear only can max out at 1080-30. You do get slow-mo, which is only at 720, and uh, you can do like time lapses and stuff like that as well. There is also another cool feature in the phone that allows you to do like dual video modes and stuff like that, where you can you know, see yourself in the subject that you're recording. But for all in all, the, the camera grade, I would have to say is kind of like a solid B, if I had to say it, I don't know. I suck at school stuff, so maybe a B, I don't know. But anyways, the point is, is it's okay, it's just not great. It's not competing with my 13 Pro, it's not competing with my S22. All right guys, so with my final conclusions of this phone, there's a but in my 
sentence that I'm about to say here. This is a fantastic budget-friendly sub $300 phone. I would highly recommend it to everyone that is looking for a sub $300 phone, but there are better phones out there that are on the used marketplace. So what I mean is if you don't care about it being new, you can go on Facebook or OfferUp and find a OnePlus 7 Pro or a OnePlus 8 or a OnePlus 8T or a Samsung Galaxy S10 or something like that that's gonna have a better camera, better chip, better performance, things like that, and be about the same price. So for example, like the 7 Pro that I found, I found it for $185. That's almost $100 cheaper than this phone, and it's a better phone. So the point is, is if you don't mind buying used, Definitely go on the used market and hunt it down and find a good phone if you don't mind negotiating with people and stuff like that. But if you like the new stuff and you want a new phone, this phone is fully capable, guys. In my week of usage, it's been great. I really do like it. I love the look. I love the colors. I love a lot of stuff about this phone. So the point is, is that this phone is an easy recommendation for people looking for a phone under $300. And um, yeah, so that's it. All right, so there we have it, guys. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you could see yourself coming back for more, do please subscribe and ring that notification bell for up-to-date content. So be safe, God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.